Have you heard about the infamous swirl flaps of death found in certain Ford Duratec engines? Now, these flaps alter the airflow into the engine at low revs and idle by swirling it um, in the interest of fuel efficiency and emissions. And these became notorious in the first few years of the Mark III European Mondeo, which uh, for any American viewers you didn't have uh, for killing engines, basically. And those bad versions are identifiable by the uh, yellow or orange color of the flap assembly. Uh, later versions are black. And frankly, there probably aren't many of the original early ones left at this point. Uh, they've probably by now mostly either been fixed or replaced or scrapped. Um, and Ford revised the intake manifold countless times, and it seems to be less of a problem on later versions, but still a risk, and uh, that includes earlier models of other cars um, using the same engine like the Focus Mark II. Uh, and eventually Ford apparently stopped using the port flaps altogether and did a version of the manifold with a different system built into the interior. Uh, so this video is going to be about dealing with the port flaps version, if you have them. And uh, if you're watching this video, you probably already know if you do. Now, one symptom of failing flaps is a rattling noise coming from the area, as the flaps become loose and uh, move around a lot with engine vibration. Now, this guy on YouTube posted a great video where he's stuck an inspection camera up through the manifold and then run the engine. Now, take a look at this. Now you can try to locate the noise uh, if you think you can hear it, uh, but it's hard because you need to ignore the other engine noises, particularly the fuel injectors, which are uh, right in the same place. Um, one thing you can do is stick a screwdriver in contact with the top of the intake manifold and listen through that. Um, another thing you can do is find this vacuum hose, uh, which is accessible around the front center of the manifold. And this line um, powers the flap actuator uh, it closes the flaps using vacuum, and removing it will open the flaps, and sometimes that will serve to quieten them down. So if you do that and you hear a difference when you remove it, that's just a problem. Um, however, I wouldn't call this a reliable test because a negative result doesn't really prove anything, and you still do need to get in there and inspect them properly to be sure. So the flaps are located in each inlet tract uh, directly in front of the engine intake ports, this is why they tend to kill the engine when they fail, because there's a metal rod involved, pieces of which can find their way down the ports into the valves, and things just self-destruct if the engine's running at the time, uh, which it usually would be. So to inspect the flaps and the rod, you therefore need to remove the intake manifold completely from the car. Now that's an involved project just on its own, and since there are other reasons to do that, I have a separate video just on that procedure. So if you're not familiar with that, you need to add that to your playlist, so to speak. Uh, from now on, I'll uh, be talking on the basis that the manifold is off the engine and we will look at our options. So here are my flaps um, as I inspected them. Now I have reason to believe that these particular flaps were replaced already and now have about 60 to 70,000 kilometers on them. Um, they're not bad, uh, but they're not great either. You can see the movement in each flap here and they get worse as I go out away from the actuator. Now you, you may find a way worse situation than this, that's possible. Uh, in my case, I still need to investigate the condition of the rod in order to make a proper assessment. So to disassemble the flaps and the rod, you need to remove the actuator. Now that involves three Torx screws as pictured. You undo them and it will just pull straight off. Now you need to remove the control arm from the rod. It just pulls directly off but um, make sure to do it perpendicular, so to speak, otherwise it could jam and you might break the plastic if you're not careful. And now you can see the end of the rod sticking out. Now we need to pull the sucker out, and uh, this can be tough. Um, get a pair of pliers or strong mole grips, and you just pull as hard as you can. Um, if it really won't come, then you can try some penetrating oil sprayed around the rod where you can access it via the inlet tracks, where you can see it. Uh, mine eventually came out with a tug. 
and then the plastic flap assemblies are free and they will just come out as you see here and you might also want to take out the uh, manifold gaskets as they're normally held in place um, by the flap surrounds so this is the only way that you can take them out and either replace them if they're gone or at least clean them up before you put them back in Now here's a look at a few of uh, my removed flap assemblies. They're covered in penetrating oil, by the way, just ignore that. Um, notice the wear around the plastic bearing that's molded into the surround, and uh, notice the movement that's possible in the ones that are bad here. Now what's really interesting, and the dangerous bit, is the rod. Now this is a 3.5 millimeter square rod, probably stainless steel of some grade. Uh, but look at these specific locations where there is this uh, really interesting wear. It look, looks like cuts, almost like somebody slipped with an angle grinder. And it's uh, rounded here at the end as well. Uh, this is the end opposite the actuator. And the final pieces in this puzzle are these two bushings or cylindrical bearings that are hidden um, between inlet tracks one and two and three and four, respectively. You need to push them out with something and get a closer look at them. Uh, these bushings are what support the rod in its position and allow it to rotate, in turn rotating the flaps, of course. So they self-locate with these uh, external rubber bits inside the manifold. And um, then they're a metal cylinder with a plastic carrier for the rod probably an oil impregnated plastic um, and I think that it's these that are the root cause of the um, failure because mine are a little bit loose and again it's the outside one that's a bit worse and they're only going to get even worse still with continued use so my conclusion is that the plastic bearing just wears too fast and then the rod becomes free to vibrate too much and in turn, of course, the uh, flap assemblies are just subjected to more wear than they're designed for. And the rod itself actually erodes itself against the plastic of the flaps, which uh, sounds bizarre, but that's what seems to happen. Um, and then eventually, of course, if it continued to its uh, inevitable conclusion, it would all just disintegrate, leading to disaster. So at this point, I would stop and suggest that you have two or three options. The first option is to do what I'm going to show you, which is replace the flaps and reuse the rod and uh, then hope to get another subsequent 50,000 kilometers or so out of it and just accept that it will want relooking at after that. So this is my compromise. Otherwise, if your rod or bushings are clearly unusable, um, then you have two extremes to choose between. Uh, now Ford do not sell the rod as a part and uh, 3.5 millimeters is a weird rod stock size uh, so difficult to replicate yourself and uh, while you can buy new bushings they're so expensive that i don't really think it would make sense to buy both new bushings and new flaps so you either replace the entire manifold as a kit um, which of course starts you off with new everything and you make sure that you buy the latest design version of it so that you have the final iteration from Ford, uh, which supposedly solves some of these problems. Uh, and in this case, you should note that you uh, also have to replace the oil separator and PCV components, uh, which is a separate topic, but just bear that in mind. Now that's expensive, but not so bad maybe if you find a good supplier, a good price, uh, maybe it's worth it to you if you're really in love with your car and you plan on keeping it forever whatever. Alternatively, you can remove the flaps completely. And to do this, you would just uh, pull everything out as shown so far. And then instead of, instead of reassembling the way I'm going to show you, you would put back in just the flap surrounds uh, because they're needed to secure the gaskets in place, uh, but leave out the flaps themselves and leave out the rod. And then you would seal up the hole where the rod pokes out to meet, meet the actuator. Um, you would seal that up with uh, aerodite or something similar and then call it a day and uh, that way you will lose the swirl flaps benefits at low revs at idle uh, maybe decrease your fuel efficiency marginally but many people have done just that and report no real problems 
So the advantage of that, of course, is that you eliminate the risk of engine damage from flaps failure completely and permanently. So you have to make a judgment based on what you want to do, what your car's worth to you, and um, how much of a perfectionist you want to be in terms of fixing things. So what I'm going to do is my compromise that I mentioned earlier. The rod in my case is worn, but only in specific locations, and uh, this is useful. So the bushings are worn as well, but not too badly, and again to uh, varying degrees, and the flaps can be replaced. So my strategy was to re swap the bushings around so that the left one goes where the right one was and vice versa. Then reinstall the gaskets. Obviously you do this regardless. And I'm replacing the flap assemblies with new ones bought from Ford. Here they are, nice and new, with no movement in the flaps. And uh, I'll put the part number and maybe links to purchase um, under the video. So they just push back into place with some pressure. Now make sure they're fully home. And here's my trick. I flip the rod 180 degrees, much like the bushings, and reinsert it. Now because the wear on it is so location specific, as long as the existing wear doesn't threaten its you know, overall integrity, then this will um, present unworn areas of the rod to those high wear areas. So uh, resetting the clock, so to speak. Now getting the rod back in is a bit tricky, as you have to have everything lined up for it perfectly and square with the rod obviously, so it requires a bit of patience, but it is possible. And finally, the actuator goes back on. Now if you're deflapping, uh, you can just leave the arm disconnected of course, and it won't be doing anything useful, but that's fine. Uh, in my case, it goes back on the rod. Then these three Torx screws get done back up. And don't forget to reconnect this vacuum line uh, if you removed it. So, voila. In uh, my compromise example, I have renewed flaps, essentially a renewed rod, and uh, thereby fix the movement in the flaps. So this should give a few more miles of trouble-free swirl flapping, um, but as I said earlier, they will eventually wear once again, and once the rod wears again in this orientation, then I, of course, wouldn't be able to flip it again. So um, that'll be end of life at that point. And in my case, the car will have enough miles on its clock that at that point that you know the best choice would be to just deflap it completely because it just won't be worth spending any money on it. Uh, so at this point, this is now ready for the manifold to go back on the engine. Again, that's in the uh, separate video that I have on removing and reinstalling the intake manifold, so go check that out. Um, yeah, I hope this was useful for uh, those of you who have been researching this. There's a, a lot of chatter about it online. So I hope this, um, the visuals in this video, so to speak, help to um, clarify some things. Okay, good luck. Have fun.